It's a new year and more importantly, it's a new decade. And what I want to do in this video is to take the time to think about and reflect on the changes I've borne witness to within the manosphere on YouTube and on the internet in general over this previous decade because some of you might know, some of you might not. I have been around for about 10 years, give or take, depending on how you measure it. And I am the last of the first, so to speak, or the last of the second, because Barbarossa preceded me. And without Barbarossa, something I acknowledge to this day, there would be no Stardust the Thinking Ape. But as Barbarossa has retired largely, I am the last fossil on YouTube. Everyone else came later, for better or worse. So what I want to do is talk about the things I've seen, the changes I've seen taking place, and what that ultimately means. Is it good or is it bad? Let me say right off the bat, I think most of the changes have been negative. It is true, without a doubt, that the manosphere has swelled, MGTOW in particular. The numbers, as it were, are there. And swelling the rank-and-file numbers, if you will, of MGTOW was certainly a goal of some people. Not me, but some people. They thought, these people, that the goal should be a mass marketing campaign. That MGTOW should be as accessible and as popular as McDonald's. And so some individuals set about to doing that. And let me take my hat off. I think they've largely succeeded. MGTOW is a known name in the internet. Everyone knows what it means, or do they? And the manosphere more broadly, everyone knows about that too. It's just one of the many niches you can find on offer when you peruse the internet, in particular YouTube. But everything comes to price. The massification of the manosphere, and more specifically MGTOW, that too had a price. The price was a loss of reflection and a loss of what I think the core meaning might have been to many people, myself included, which is, put very simply, living on your own terms. And those terms are not defined by anyone other than you. But the way massification works, the way mass marketing works, the way popular stuff works, you have to make it accessible, and you have to make it short and sweet, and you have to make it such that anyone can get it, whether they're interested or not. And so, if you were to ask the common person what MGTOW might mean, they probably would have a very negative answer. Matter of fact, that's all I really hear these days. I'm not sure if they would have had the same answer back in the day, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Now, part of this, I'll admit, is simply a process of self-discovery and the relentless march of time. Quite frankly, ten years ago, even six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, there was a lot more to be said about many topics as they concern men and women. These days, far less. But one thing I really want to focus in on in this video is the very marked difference in the reception of certain messages and information within the manosphere and how it's projected onto the reality outside, that is, IRL, real life. See, as the previous decade has ended, I've borne witness to some very strange things. The emergence of quote-unquote incels, F.A., and a newfound obsession with women. Not just the usual societal obsession that is shoved down our throats all the time, but a personal obsession where men judge themselves and esteem themselves solely with respects to whether or not they have been successful sexually or romantically with women. And to the extent that they're not, the entire world is over. It's GG, according to them. Now, this is a big change from back in the day, and let me tell you why. Because, back in the day, there were guys without a lot of experience with women, unsuccessful, whatever. But for whatever reason, they didn't let that get them down, and they didn't let that turn into an obsession. What they did instead is they pursued their talents. 
they realized that there's more to life than just women. And they got on with their lives and went their own way and ended up doing their own things. I know a number of such people, and although I've never interrogated them about it, they're probably virgins or at the very least were not successful women in any conventional sense, but realized maybe too that the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. But what do we have these days? We have guys, even middle-aged guys, spending day and night obsessing about dating and women. And no doubt, some of these differences have been introduced by things like Tinder and apps that didn't exist at the time 10 years ago. But the entire mentality and approach with respect to these things has fundamentally shifted. And some guys, for whatever reason, don't even think going their own way is an option because, frankly speaking, they've become trapped in this paradigm of no woman, yes, cry. And what's really disturbing about this trend as we've now transitioned into this new decade, in my estimation, is how young the guys are. I meet guys on a regular basis online telling me that their lives are simply over. They don't have social opportunities at school. They don't meet women. They don't have anything that interests them. They've just given up. And I'm a middle-aged man. And I'm thinking, hold on a second. If you were 45 or 50, I could kind of relate. But you're 15. And you're throwing in the towel already. Because reasons, social media, and women don't like me, and whatever. It's astonishing. And it's true that teenagers tend to be mercurial and whimsical and unreliable and flighty, but the consistency of this attitude is what is really astonishing here. But when you really drill down on these guys and ask them what they're doing, it turns out they're not doing a whole lot. This is what I mean about this newfound obsession with women essentially creating a haze, a mirage in the minds of the youth. Because you ask them what they do, and they'll tell you pretty much nothing. But then they'll go on about how they can't get a date or whatever. And this is not just have a shower, bruh, hit the weights, bruh, speech, I assure you. This is just recognizing what you can do in your own life. And that's the thing. If you go down the list of things you could do, how certain are you at that age or really at any age, that you're doing everything you can. Again, this is not, yeah, just have a shower, bro, lift weights, bro. It's not what I'm talking about. No, what I am talking about is the idea that maybe you're not doing everything you could. Maybe you're not seeing the forest for the trees anymore. Maybe you got caught up in all the hype online so much that it's dragged you down to the point where you don't even know what's real and what's not anymore. Because here's the thing, I guarantee you, especially if you're a young guy, that you're not doing everything you can. You're not even close. If all you're doing is hanging out on a Discord server and going to school and that's it, you're not doing everything you can. Assuming your health, assuming all these things, and even not assuming that, assuming you might have some minor health issue. There's still things that you can do. Because that really is what life is about at the end of the day, doing the things you can do. So it might be perfectly justifiable that you should not strive to become a professional basketball player because you're only five foot eight and you're not particularly athletic. Well, boo-hoo. There are probably a dozen other things you could be trying to do and striving for. These young guys these days, they have a vision that's been completely distorted and mediated by the hyper-reality of the internet and all the more to say about hyper-reality in the future. Everything seems realer, everyone's happier, everyone's prettier, everyone's more handsome, whatever. But again, when you drill down on them and ask them what they're doing, they ain't doing jack shit. They're not even leaving the house half the time. They've given up on life at age 16. It's over. What a crock of shit. And that... I have to say, is one of the major, if not the major difference between back in the day, Manosphere and MGTOW, and the current era. These guys have effectively given up and don't even want to try. Because some of them, for whatever reason, have gotten into their heads that either they still have time or that whatever it is that they end up doing needs to be fun or fulfilling or whatever. 
no, life is short. And pretty soon, you and I, whatever your age, we'll all be dead. And on top of that, a lot of life is just following a routine. Routine, and I hate to sound Jordan Petersonian here, gives you a sense of order, a sense of direction. There's not a single day, for example, that I really enjoy going to the gym, but I still do it because it helps. It helps keep me going. It helps keep you chugging along. And to all these guys who delude themselves and thinking people are enjoying their lives, do you really think people are enjoying their lives, dragging themselves to work at 5.30 in the morning? They're doing it mostly because they have to and because that's where it starts. It starts with doing something. So, for example... If you're 15 or 16 and never leave the house, maybe you should start taking a walk three days a week, 40 minutes a piece. Download some podcasts, have a listen, whatever. Whatever gets you through the day, whatever enables you to do that, that's a start. And then from there, you could make it five times a week. And then if you want to do something else, you can do something else. And it compounds and it adds to that. Here's the other thing. It's not going to be easy. There's a version of a phrase I like, that being... You're only your best when you're your worst, meaning when you're really, really, really at rock bottom and you still manage to crawl out of that situation and get shit done, that's meaningful. And that is a testament to what you can do as an individual. And in particular, if you look at yourself from a MGTOW perspective, what you can do and go in your own way. It's not the days when I feel all right that I hit the gym and I got it done. It's the days when I've slept less than two hours and I don't have the energy and I have to measure everything out in my head and I'm still going to go to the gym. I'm going to be more careful. I'm not going to lift this heavy, but I'm going to get it done. Even though it is causing me immense pain and discomfort, I'm still going to get it done. Those are the days when I'm at my best, not when I'm feeling slightly better. If you think it's over at age 16 or 15 or 18 or 21 or even 25 or even 27, you got another thing coming. And the transparent change I have observed in the manosphere from one decade to the next is complacency. Just a lot of complacency. Are men still doing what they want to? Are men still pursuing their dreams? Do they have any dreams to begin with? And I don't like the term dream. It's cheesy as hell. But you know what I mean. Are there things you envision that you want to pursue? And more importantly, why do they have anything to do with women? That you can't score with the ladies, maybe that's the case, maybe it's not. That should be no hindrance whatsoever to doing other things, especially if they're cerebral nature or even athletic nature. You can still do all of that stuff, but the guys these days, they've been paralyzed by the internet and paralyzed by the messages they receive. We have this situation with the young guys where, frankly speaking, They've given up before they've even started. And that's supposed to be acceptable. There are many messages out there imploring men to wake up. How about the message that tells men it's up to you? How about the message that tells men there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your woman obsession? That message, it's up to you. All of society could be going to pot it doesn't matter. It still comes down to you, the man who's got to get his shit done. No one's going to come from the outside to do it for you. And if you wait too long, you'll be dead. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe not. But ultimately, it's up to you. You have to make the changes in your life. And it is a new decade, so maybe now is the time to start living your life, whatever your age is. But especially if you're young, and to resign yourself to what? It being over at age 15, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, take your pick. It is ludicrous. You want to say that shit at age 50? That's fine. If you're going to be that age and say that to me, I'm not going to let that fly. Every man that's gone before you, that has lived his life, struggled, fallen, gotten back up, we've all been through BS. We're still chugging along sometimes with injuries. Emotional, mental, physical, all of the above doesn't matter. But we're still chugging along and you just want to give up at age 15 or 16. No one else is going to pick your ass up and get the shit done that you want to get done. And frankly speaking, the shit that you need to get done. I can give a speech 
that's not going to help. I can talk to you in person, that's not going to help. But to paralyze yourself at that age, that's just not going to fly. And here's the thing. The longer you're caught up in your comfort zone, not doing anything, the longer and harder it is for you to get out of it. And that's why I said you're only your best when you're your worst. And I want to, again, reiterate, I'm not Jordan Peterson. I'm not telling you to go lift weights, bruh. I'm telling you to really introspect and ask yourself if you're doing anything, something, telling yourself it's over. It's really easy to tell yourself it's over, especially when you haven't even tried in the first place. Anyway, those are some of the things I've witnessed in the manosphere, the changes I've seen taking place. People that have given up before they even started, young men, it's a lot worse than it used to be. And I suspect in this decade, it's going to get a lot worse. Gentlemen, as always, may the gods watch over you. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.